Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in to another episode of City Views. I'm Jacques Williams, your host. City Views is brought to you by none other than Tote Insurance Agency, located at 1151 East Main Street. Better protection, better value. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am... I don't even know how to describe what I'm feeling right now because I have waited so long to get this gentleman on our show. And thanks to our community relations uh, representative, the one and only Miss Catherine Pezzi. Yes. She reached out to my main man, Rashamel Jones, Thank former you. UConn basketball star part of the 1999 championship squad carrying the banner for basketball Jones is all over the world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. I appreciate the love, brother. Hey, plenty of it coming here. And uh, Rashamel, we're so glad that uh, you had the opportunity to take time out of your busy schedule uh, to talk to our City Views audience today. Um, man, how you doing? I'm doing excellent, brother. You know, I just want to thank you for having me on. Um, and to be honest, you you have to be a special individual to get me on. You know, to to get me out of the to pull me out of the Rise Jones world, you got to be a special individual, and that you are, brother. I just want to thank you for having me on your show. Well, our our mutual friend, uh, Mr. Steve Toth. Yes, um, shout out to Steve. That's my no guy. Doubt. No doubt about that. Uh, Steve is D-man or dumb man, <laughs> <laughs> as he would be called in some circles. And he's just been such a tremendous uh, resource to us here at City Views. Uh, he's been solidly in our corner the whole time. He's been associated with us. And, um, you know, you can, you know, spout off all these glittering generalities about things. But when they're actually true, <laughs> it's yes. nice to give credit. Yes, sir. Where credit is due. And so, that is, uh, that's the truth. And you know the character of the man, so uh, yes, I don't sir. have to embellish it any more than that. Yes, sir. Shout out Steve, my guy. That's so, awesome. Rashamel, uh, you know, as I was explaining to you uh, pre-interview, uh, you're getting rare air here. We, we 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 might be talking for the next two hours, man, because there's so much going on. Yes, you know, is. and there's so many uh, connective points uh, in in regards to what you're doing in your life, mm -hmm. the things that are you know driving you, your passions, and what's happening in the real world. Uh, but before we get off into all that, Rashamel, take this uh, opportunity to uh, reintroduce yourself to our audience and give them a little bit of the Rashamel Jones bio. Well, appreciate that. Thank you, um, Jacques. Well, you know, my story is, is a, little, it's a little crazy. You know, the, the beginning, you know, I come from a broken home, um, and it was the reverse in my world where it was my mother who kind of, you know, walked away from the situation, um, leaving, you know, myself and, you know, two older sisters with my dad. And, you know, my dad being a strong, you know, man he is, um, only thing he knew was to tie his shoes tighter and to work a little harder. He didn't know anything about walking away. So when it comes to hard work, um, that's my role model. That's my idol. Um, that's my everything. You know, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, they always ask, how was it playing for Coach Calhoun? You know, he's a screamer. He's I said, listen. Coming, if, if you know my dad, um, you know, Coach Calhoun is, is a pastor, you know, um, compared to Larry Jones. So, um, you know, I, my, my upbringings and, 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 my, and what was instilled in me came from my father, um, you know, and, and, and coming up, uh, he was a, a working man, like I said. So at a young age, you know, I was able to move around and do things that a lot of 10 year olds, 11 year olds weren't able to do, you know, um, just because of the, I didn't have that home structure, you know, um, my dad's mentality, he's old school from North Carolina was, you know, as long as I'm working, um, long as there's food on the table, they got clothes on their back. There's nothing wrong. 
you know, that, that, that was his mentality. Um, so, you know, like I said, um, what saved my life once again was, uh, the, the, the men that I've met in my life, um, starting with, um, coach Joe Archino, um, Don Bosco center. Um, I started playing basketball late, uh, well joining a team, I should say, um, always played from the age of six, but I was all in the parks, met coach Joe Archino at 13. Um, joined my first basketball team. Um, and that changed my life right there. Um, you know, I, I, I started to understand what um, unified, being, you know, having unity, working with, with other people to accomplish goals, um, you know, because he always used to challenge us, you know, like, guys, we win this game or if we can stop them from scoring the next two minutes, uh, I'll take you guys out to eat. So he used to always throw things at us. <laughs> You know, and you, you got to be kidding me. He pulled the old food trick, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking old school there because there is old school to the point at one time you couldn't give him nothing else but some food. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what no million dollar paychecks back then? Yes, sir. So I, I come from that cloth, you know. So, um, you know, fast forward in, you know, 13 now. I'm, I'm, I'm starting actually basketball is starting to allow me to travel outside of New York now. Um, you know, I, I, I got linked up with the New York City Gauchos um, that's in the Bronx, which is a, a, a world famous AAU program. All the greats have played there. Um, so this is where I'm really starting to and now I'm 14 years old. This is where I'm starting to understand what's really going on around me and starting to understand that this game of basketball is a serious game. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to be invited with that same team out to Indianapolis at 14, um, you know, Chicago, Virginia, North Carolina, we're all I'm 14 years old. And now, like I said, my, my whole world is starting to change so fast. And like I said, that's when, it, it, I, it clicked early for me that, man, this game is special. And if you, you treat it right and, and, and do the right things and, and, and do the right things by other people, um, life is not that hard. That is a, a great backdrop uh, to what we're going to be talking about in this interview, because I'm sure you're familiar with um, the uh, adage from uh, Emmett Smith that uh, although he applies it to football, mm -hmm. I think it can be applied in general to most sports in terms of uh, being that great analogy of life, uh, how sports can instill within uh, one those uh, values that propel you through life. And when we're talking in context uh, of uh race relations, uh, social dynamics, uh, uh, cultural uh, diversity. I think the values that you learn from sports can play a pivotal role in crafting out the, um, the protocols that come forth for that. Can you uh, talk a little bit to that, Rashmel, in terms of uh, how you've been able to apply those values that you've learned into yeah. your regular everyday life? You know, when you look at just like you talked about sports in general, if you look at the world, um, especially the United States, um, you know, when COVID hit, the only only people or only entities that were allowed to move around and still work freely were the athletic worlds, the sports world. Until, you know, a couple cases, people, you know, a couple athletes got COVID, had to shut the NBA down. Then they had to move to the bubble um to a much more secure facility but at the same time it didn't stop whereas schools stopped um banks closed businesses shut down oh man forget about the small business owner they, they, they were devastated through this COVID, but yet the basketball world professional world they were still up and moving and and, and that's just the power of of what the sports is, is all about in this country. Um, and I learned that at an early age. Um, you know, when I saw, you know, how it, it the people, the older adults, the, the, the major corporations, I saw how they gravitated 
especially to the youth, the youth division. And, you know, they're looking for their next NBA star. You know, um, when you look at all these major AAU sponsored programs, you know, that's basically, you know, the, the untalked about rule is, you know, Nike's not going to sponsor a, a, a 15 year old team if they don't think they have kids on that team that have potential NBA uh, ability or that can make the NBA or that's going to sign a future sneaker deal with them. They, they get them early. And like I say, I, I learned that through sports, um, you can create your legacy. Um, and, and if you look at all the, the, the ones that we, we, we idolized that became icons, the Muhammad Ali's, he, I mean, he did a lot more than just box, you know, he, he, he was a freedom fighter. He was a rebel. Um, you know, um, the list goes on, you know, look at the, the, the all the, the, the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's, you know, like I said, the, the, the sports world is we're, we're competitive United, you know, American people are competitive. And when when you're that competitive, but once you can mix it together with the team mindset, when this is the beauty of sports, when you can bring in 10 guys from 10 different states or parts of the world and bring them in and all have the get the same mentality to play on the same accord, to play for that same goal. And the beauty of it is everyone is an individual within that structure. And that's the beauty of it. And, you know, when you watch the great teams, you know, that's why they win these multiple championships and they all talk about it. It's bigger than basketball. And Pat Riley had a great, a great phrase that even sometimes even the, the, the great, a lot of great coaches don't say this. The word they use is, um, you know, um, you play with this guy. You know, Pat Riley term his thing is you play for that guy. You play for your teammate. When you step on this court, you're not just playing for yourself. You're playing for that next man to your right or to your left. And when he said that, I love that. You know, that's almost almost militant in a way, like, you know, soldier mentality. When you're in that field, you know, that guy to your left and to your, to your right, those are the guys you want to come back at the end of the night. You know, so that's what sports is, is all about, building and bonding. You know, it took sports to break down the racial barriers in our country. Let's talk about that, you know, especially in Boston when, you know, I salute and RIP to Red Arback, you know, there was times where Bill Russell and those guys, they, they wouldn't even let them stay in hotels. Now you got Bill Russell, who's the man, just Bill Russell, and you won't let him stay in a hotel because of his skin color. So to see that, that it's basketball players, those individuals, they were bigger than the sport. They actually broke down barriers. Um, and you, you own, and, and people really don't even look at things like that. Um, people do. Some people, the, the, the great minds do. But um, it, 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 it takes, you know, uh, in, my, in my eyes, it takes someone of, of a character like a Michael Jordan, uh, a Magic Johnson, you know, someone who's, who's been in the face of the public um, someone, you know, no one's perfect. Everyone has their faults. Um, but when you look at individuals that came through the, 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 the professional ranks, the college ranks and done some great things. I mean, I hear the stories, people stop me all the time, you know, elderly through the young, you know, especially elderly people like, man, Raj, you don't know what, 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 what that UConn team did for my soul. Um, you know, Man, I get that so much. Like, man, like I could die now, Rosh. Like, you don't understand. You, you like, you know, like don't, don't die on me. But I understand. You know, um, I, you know, I people I I know that stop me. That's been incarcerated. That tell me, man. Oh man, Rashamel. Oh man, it's good. You don't understand. I was in such and such penitentiary, and when your game came on, believe it. Or not, Nobody could watch TV. The stories that I heard, you know, th for this game, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful, but it just speaks volume of how we as the people, we, we, we take to the, sp the, the sporting event. We nat we na we're naturally competitive. That's what we do. Whether you're an athlete, whether you're an academic scholar, you want to be the best scholar. You know, you, if you're a checker player, 
You want to be the best checker player and you're going to be competitive at that and you're going to work on your craft. And, you know, that's what sports did for myself. And I know it did for a lot of others. Well, you know, I think um, you have that opportunity um, to when you're participating in sports. And I know this has happened uh, with a lot of artists mm -hmm. <clears throat> because you do get to uh, associate with people that are in parts of our society that you may not otherwise be able to. So there's a two-way kind of give and take there because the athlete himself is empowered by participating in the sport, but they're also empowered by the relationships that they get to form yes. while participating in the sports. Mm -hmm. Can you address that a little bit and how that's helped you in your development? Well, you know, like you, how you said it, you said it perfectly, you know, the relationships that you form within the, 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 the arena is the, the life is, is, is the, the key to success. Um, the best people in the world that I've met have come through the game of basketball. Um, I'm talking about people I know that I can hand my child's life over to if anything was to happen to me through the game of basketball. Um, so the relationships and the bonds that I've created, um, brotherhoods, I'm talking about from the players, through the managers, through the coaching staff. Um, that's why I'm big on when I use the word coach, you know, and I always tell young players, you know, if you can't call your coach and ask him other things outside of the game of basketball, he's not your coach. You know, if, you know, a lot of, you know, people want to use that word, throw it out there. I'm a coach, this and that, but you know, only sticking to the X and O's. This game is bigger than X and O's. Um, you know, so just the, the, the relationships that, that were formed, um, you know, once again, uh, uh, bonding with people who didn't know me from Adam, who, you know, only knew me because of this team. But through the trials and tribulations of, you know, the wins and the losses and, you know, the team practices and the team trips to the movie theaters and, you know, just, you know, walking through the mall as a team, you know, those are the moments that, you know, you 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 cherish forever, you know, like my Yukon brothers, you know, for four years, we never went home for Thanksgiving and we never went home for Christmas and we never went home for spring break. And so while everybody else is in Miami and, you know, Mardi Gras having a good time, you know, we were up in stores working on our craft and our education. Um, and, you know, when, and when you're around people for that long periods of time, you know, they become family members. Forget, you know, my teammate. They become family members. Well, you said something very interesting, and it's something that my uh, one of my high school coaches shared with me because, uh, you know, and we were talking about, you know, relationship building and whatnot, and, uh, you know, he was saying that, you know, if you think that coaching is limited to, you know, what you do, in practice and what you do in the game, you don't understand coaching. Coaching is a 24 hour a day job. <laughs> One of my coaches back in the day, we were talking about this and, you know, I remember him saying, he's like, yeah, you know, you have to really invest, you know, literally all your time into this endeavor, you know, and we still have to teach, you know, we might have a part-time job on the side or whatever, but, you know, this is what we have to focus in on. Yes. And he's like, well, wow, that's, you know, really, you know, great. You know, he goes, he goes, why do you think I'm trying to bust your butts to get through high school and graduate? <laughs> yes. Yes. He goes, we get tired of that sometimes. <laughs> get out there, get independent, get on your own, know the rules of the game. Yes, sir. Win. Yes, sir. But yes, this sir. is a 24 hour job, 24 hour day, seven hour, uh, I I tell you, day a week job. I'm, a, I'm a blessed man. And I say that because not too many, you know, players have the opportunity, you know, especially, you know, done co playing college and to come back and actually get an opportunity to work with your college coach who turned Hall of Famer. And, right. you know, and when you're, as we call it, 
as or as Coach Calhoun calls it, you know, where we do our team plan in the bunker. Just yeah. having just having that mentality, bunker. You know, we it's this we're going to war right now and we're strategizing right now. And just to be around him for those years, starting in 2005 when I came back, done playing in Europe, and being around him as a student assistant at UConn, and you know, continuing when he started the St. Joe's um, Division Three program, working with him since 2017, um, just to see that man's work ethic. Um, and I tell you, I, I still just just looking at his grind, I. I, I admire it. I love it. And, you know, a lot of people may ask, you know, why is he doing, what he, you know, he has four national titles. Why is he coaching Division Three? You know why? Because this man, as he's, he's a lifer, he's going to die doing this. This is, there's no other way for him. Um, for, for after games, you know, games over at 10 o'clock at night, he's in, the, in his office till three o'clock in the morning watching film, even win or loss watching film, prepping for the next game. So when you can watch and, and be around greatness like that, um, you, you only got to appreciate it, and it only builds you up as an individual. Well, you know, and I would be absolutely remiss, <clears throat> Mr. Jones, if we didn't ask you to share with us the sentiments what you, your teammates, felt to win that first championship for the University of Connecticut Huskies. Take us there. Let us feel what you were feeling at that moment of history for this. I'm one of the best programs uh, in the country, both women's and men's basketball. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm going to start you the night before the game. Let me take you there. The night before that 1999 game versus Duke, um, we just had our our team film session, you know, um, watching Duke and, you know, watching what they <laughs> love to do, things like that. So after the film session, you know, Coach says, all right, guys, you know, go back to the room, hang out. Lights is out by this time. You know, let's get ready for tomorrow. So um, Ricky Moore, you know, my other captain, the co-captain, um, he and I shared rooms. So all the guys were hanging out in our room that night. So truth this is the true story. ESPN comes on. So ESPN is doing a special back in Durham, North Carolina at some at some gas station. Now, they're at this gas station, ESPN, and within this gas station, they had all the Duke apparel and on these Duke shirts, balloons, newspapers already pressed up that Duke won the national title. Yes, ESPN did a story. Uh, uh, it was a, a live thing they did at some gas station selling Duke. Duke wins the national championship, and that was the ultimate slap in the face right there ultimate slap in the face we, that right that's when i knew you know how the favoritism comes into play duke being the more storied program um you know now how i understand it even more you know they they wanted north carolina to be in that game you know not yukon you know or a, a michigan state or you know um ohio state you know one of the those story Division one programs, you know, who have, you know, great history, football and basketball. But it was a slap in the face. So, you know, we're just like, man, we can't believe this. Like we we looking at each other with just really. <laughs> <laughs> and right, right there, we, we looked at each other that night and said, and Ricky, Ricky Moore said, listen, man, get out. Uh, everybody out. We going to bed. See you in the morning. Next day. We made history that next day. As my man Khalid Alamine said, we shot the world. And, I'm, you know, and, and I don't even, I don't like to, I'm not even going to call it boasting, but we knew all year long they were number one, we were number two. And once again, Duke being Duke, nobody was beating them, no one was beating us. But one thing we always knew, 
we were a tougher team. We knew we were mentally, and I'm not even going to say physically tougher, because if you knew who was on that team, Corey Maggette, Elton Brand, those are some Shane Battier, those are some physically built men, you know, young men at that time. So we not not going to say we were more physically, but mentally, we knew the type of conditions coach set for us all year. From You had the better backcourt. I'm, you know, I wouldn't even say we had the better backcourt, you know. I would. We, I mean, I, you look on paper, when you, I'm, I'm talking about on paper, you know, you got Khalid Alamein, Avery Williams, you got Trajan Langdon, Ricky Moore, um, you know, you got Corey Maggette, Richard Hamilton, you know, Shane Battier, Kevin Freeman, um, Elton Brand, Jake Vosco. You know, they starting five went to the NBA. They starting five was first round. We only had one guy go to the lead that year. That was Richard Hamilton. So on paper, you know, when you look at it, like, oh, yeah, Duke is about to wash these guys up on the floor. But they didn't understand the, the, the toughness and the resilience that we had. We, we play from, from jump ball to the end of the horn, literally. We, we don't stop playing. And everyone knows our style of play. And, and, that's the, and if you understand coaches, his philosophy is – don't let anyone outwork you because we're going to outwork everyone. That's the – go ahead. That, that, that's the key, outworking everyone. Well, I, I think that's what you brought to that squad too because you, you kind of like that transition guy. Yep. You know, you could get physical and bang low when you needed to go down and bang and rebound, but you also could defend on the perimeter. Yes, sir. You know? So uh, you could definitely tell where Coach Calhoun – had players fit his scheme. Yes, and 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 I tell you that I didn't even take an official visit to UConn. You know, people don't even know that. I, I went there because I saw how they played. I saw um they were an up and down team, but loved defense. And that's my game right there. Defense, get it and go. Forget about it. I'll thrive in that environment. Um you know you you you're creating on the go. You know Playing at that level, it, the thinking, the thinking process is just you're you're five steps ahead of everyone else on just on the, on how you prepare yourself, and that's the beauty of it right there. And I think that's what, <clears throat> and you know, I think that was kind of the change of pace, which gave you guys, in my opinion, just from my basketball um, savantism. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's difficult to, at least now it is, to play that type of defense that you guys were playing back then in today's game. But I think that was the difference in that Duke-UConn matchup was how you guys defended on the perimeter. Without, with, without a doubt, we had this, you know, college basketball in general is dominated through guard play. You know, you could have mediocre front line, but if you have superior guard play, you're going to be in a lot of games. I'm not saying you're going to win those games, but you're going to be in a lot of those those crucial moment games when you have big time guards that can make big time plays defensively and offensively. And you know, and that's college basketball at its best. You know, is, is dominated by the, the guard, the one, the two, and the three. You know, to to have a big man at at, at the college level at the college level is a blessing. You know, that's why when you look at the, the, the UConn 2014 with the Mecca Okafer and the Ben the Ben Gordons, they had the one-two punch. They had an inside-outside combo that you – both of them guys went to the NBA, first-rounders. Um, you can't do anything with that. A Mecca is an animal inside. You got Ben outside hitting the bombs, locking up everybody. You're going to win on everything. You're going to win, and, and they won the national championship with that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's all about having good, strong guards. Absolutely it is. You know, uh, now, <clears throat> I got to tell you, Rashamel, I know you're a hard man to get a hold of. <laughs> you got so much going on. But, um, you know, we're going to have to think about closing this interview. But I, I, I want to do that on a, a stipulation, okay? Yes, sir. Because I'm going to be starting a podcast here mm. uh, in the next few weeks, all right? Wow. And, um I'm going to be hooking up with some of my old cats from back in the day, Keith yes. Byers, Ron Harper, mm. uh, 
you know, the whole crew from, mm. from, from Dayton. Yes, sir. You know that Dayton funk is alive yes, and well these days. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, I want you to consider getting in the mix, Rashamel, because uh, there's there's some cats out there, man, that got some real good stuff going on, man. And I, I think now, now is the time. Yep. I would love us. it. Now is the time for us to collaborate, show the strength of the arts, yes. show what diversity looks like, yes. mm -hmm. and continue to forge on this movement of social justice. Yes. So that yes. we don't slowly regress into something that we're not, yeah. <clears throat> which we're in danger mm -hmm. of happening. Mm -hmm. We've come too far yeah. to let all the sacrifices that have gotten us to a point mm -hmm. where we can actually touch, see, feel mm -hmm. what liberty looks like. Mm -hmm. We can't, and, we can't, we can't let those sacrifices go in vain. And 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 that's why I'm on the front line, starting with the youth. Because as a youth who, whose mind is still changeable in a sense, the education aspect, and when I, when, I, when I say education, I'm not just talking about ABCs, learning, you know, any type of putting sentence. I'm just talking about life education as well, showing them the, the rights and the wrongs, putting forth examples for them. Um, you know, I have things, uh, leadership programs myself that I'm about to, uh, you know, get off the ground. And one of them is where I'm going to be bringing in individuals who have spent time behind the walls and penitentiaries and bring them in to 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 share their story and to tell these youngsters that, listen, you know, you, you think you have a friend right now until you do that crime with that individual and that same individual who you had eaten at your table with you is the one sending you to federal prison for the next 15 years. So be mindful of who you call your friend, you know, so, you know, and, and, and these guys are going to talk about if they would have went to school, how it would have changed their life. Um, you know, they're going to talk about all the pitfalls that a lot of youth think are cool or is the wave. They, they're going to come in and, 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 and give them the opposite of that. And that's that's the education that I, I want to present and that I want to give forth to our youth. So by the time, you know, by the time these these youngsters are in the sixth grade, they've been well educated from the books all the way through the street street life, through the world, how to deal with people. And, you know, a lot of under, individuals like yourself, you know, being from the Midwest, you know, you can go anywhere in this world and, you know, by yourself comfortably and never have to look over your shoulder. And that's because of how you carry yourself, how you treat others. And it's all off of you. You got to give respect to get respect. And if you're not getting the respect off of what you're given, then that's when you have to make your, your decision. Do you keep messing with this individual or do you move on? And these are the, the lessons that I'm, I'm instilling in these youngsters and, and what you said of the hard work that our people have put in through the centuries to, to, to get where we are right now. And, you know, there's a lot of entities, believe it or not, that, that may be trying to disrupt the, the, the gains that we've gained. And a lot of entities are financially gaining off of our struggle. I'm, 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 the, the Orchid Boys and Girls Club is in the poorest section of Bridgeport one of the poorest sections in the state of Connecticut. Our homeless population is through the roof. Um, you know, you come by the Orca any day, they're, they're digging through our garbage. Yet, none of the Black Lives Matter money, funds, have came through our doors, and we've been open the whole pandemic. I made that a, a issue to be open the whole pandemic so people don't feel like they're trapped in their house. Um, you can come out. And, you know, whether you can just watch some TV, you know, we had all the, 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 the COVID restrictions in place, masks, hand sanitizer, social desk. We had it all in place. Um, so, you know, and we didn't see any of that money. 
Um, none of the other centers around the, 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 the Bridgeport um, community have seen any of this money. Um, so once again, and I've learned through looking at my forefathers, um, they didn't sit around and wait for others to create for them. They went out and created what they knew that the people need and what the community need um, with other great individuals alongside them. They didn't wait for they didn't wait for handouts. They went and got it. And, you know, I took that page from our forefathers. You don't wait for anything. You want something, you got to go out and make it happen. And that's another lesson that, you know, I want to instill in our youth. So, yes, you know, let's build. I, I'm, I'm on board. You know, you got me. Whatever you have going on, send me an invite and I will be there. Well, let me let me say something, uh, Rashamel, because what you just told me about uh, the lack of funding for uh, the orchard. Uh, yeah. Orchid, we need to look into that. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, because uh, I got to be honest with you. Um, and this is why, you know, what happened, you know, with the basketball pro program in UConn <clears throat> had uh, a profound uh, impact on me because, you know, I moved to uh, Connecticut right before uh, you guys started having, you know, all your successes. Mm -hmm. But uh, during my time here in Connecticut, as with cities all over the country, you, I was able to witness how the perspectives of certain cities are really not indicative of what those cities are really all about. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. And Bridgeport is a victim of that. Yes. I know some of the best people that I've met in the music business in Bridgeport. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've attended some events in Bridgeport. And it's the people are beautiful. Yes. However, you can see where funding priorities in the city have been, let's just be honest with with about it have been neglected. Yes. Yes. And you know, I, I think one thing that the pandemic has brought out, it's highlighted those disparities within our communities. And I think that's through the efforts, some of the athletes, some of the artists that are coming to the forefront mm -hmm. can really make a huge difference going forward, making sure that those educational bridges are connected. We yep. need to break down those walls and build those bridges. Yep. And funding at those district levels need to be reassessed so that those needs are getting met. And if you can provide that type of organic growth, that's what we need now. We need organic growth. Yep. Trickle down is only Pardon my French, is only when we get peed on, okay? Mm -hmm. We need to grow from the bottom up. And we need to plant those seeds that can put those programs and activities in place that can be sustained yeah. over a generation. Generational yeah. economic growth is yeah. the next step that we need to look at. Yeah. So, you know, all these efforts, you know, we try to have fun at it and, you know, whatever and whatnot. But at the end of the day, they're very serious efforts that uh, yes, we sir. need to make sure that we stay, stay on yes. top of. Yes, sir. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. You know, um, you know, it's a, it's an everyday fight. You know, it's an everyday challenge, something every day, a, a new challenge is presented. And, you know, what I'm learning, uh, you know, once again, I'm taking my my basketball mentality and mindset and putting that in on, you know, my director's hat and using those same principles, um, you know, and I'm, I'm up late at night, you know, I'm, I'm taking a page out of Coach Calhoun book, you know, researching different grants and, you know, different government programs and, you know, um, just just doing other other things you know, once again, then basketball that, um, you know, that is going to be required to to keep the orchid um, 
running at a high level because um you know and, and and be that 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 staple in that community for the people because they they definitely need us and like i said i'm open we're open seven days a week and we're going to remain seven days a week and and until because we're about the people and 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 that's what it's about being about the people working for others Yo, RJ, I'm ready to flow. I'm so ready to in flow. Chicago. Yes, sir. In yes, Chicago. Sir. My man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, appreciate that line. Hey, um, there's more, more of it coming on the way. Uh, so keep your eyes and ears open. In the meantime, um, you know, we're going to, um, you know, be contacting you as we develop um, our plans. And Yes, sir. Um, we're going to be looking forward to your contributions um, to our platform. Most definitely, and I and more than welcome. And I'm and I'm anxiously waiting. So um, let's do it, brother. Uh, uh, let's build and 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 you know let's let's get real giant in these in, in these communities. You know it. You yes, know sir. It. Yes. Thank thank you so much, uh, Rashamel. Uh, this has been. Um, something that we've looked forward to for quite some time and uh i guess good things do come to those who wait <laughs> yes sir yes sir <laughs> hey and um shout out to you uh dan as well fabulous awesome guy love the conversations we had um look forward to you know meeting dan as well one day so um you guys got a great thing going on there man much respect and much love thank you so much rashamel and uh, we want to encourage each and every one of you to check out our YouTube channel at cityviews-ct or our website at cityviews-ct.com for the latest in news, arts, and culture in Torrington and Litchfield County. You guys have a good one, and we'll see you back with more on City Views.